Hey, US loyal friend share, we meet again, hopefully always healthy and continue to carry out activities as usual. This time, we will try to discuss about the beginning of the founding of the Ottoman Turks, the power that stood tall for more than six centuries, and managed to rule over three continents. But before continuing, don't forget to support this channel by subscribing and please leave a trace in the comments column. In the second half of the 6th century AD, the Turks who came from Turkestan made a great migration to the region of Asia Minor. This migration brought them to live along the Amu Dera, Tabaristan and Gorgon rivers. The first contact between the Turks and the Muslims is thought to have occurred during the reign of Umar bin Khattab. At Tabari informed that Shabaraz, one of the leaders of the Turks, had made a peace treaty with the Muslims during the time of Yuma bin Khattab. After the peace treaty, Shabaraz and his followers joined the Muslim army towards Armenia. During the reign of Uthman bin Affan, the conversion of the Turks to Islam became even greater. After the liberation of the Tabaristan and Transoxiana regions by Muslim troops, more Turks converted to Islam and joined the Muslim army than ever before. In subsequent developments, the Turks began to take on a larger role in the Muslim world during the Abbasid era. Caliph al-Muthasim who saw the potential of the Turks, began to open the door wider for the Turks to enter the structure of the Abbasid government. Al-Muthasim's policy caused general jealousy among the non-Turkish Abbasid military. As a result of this jealousy, Caliph al-Muthasim had to move the Abbasid capital from Baghdad to Samarra. However, that jealousy did not prevent the Turks from taking on a larger role in the structure of the Abbasid government. In about the 11th century AD or the 5th century Hijri, the Turks established a government that was larger than the previous one. History recognizes the Turkish kingdom as the Seljuk Sultanate. As a Sultanate, the Seljuks are unique in that they have many other small Sultanates spread across Transoxiana, Khurasan, Syria, and Asia Minor. All these small Sultanates were subject to the Seljuk Sultanate in Iraq. Given that from the beginning the Turks were close to the Abbasids, the Seljuks themselves politically supported the Sunni Abbasid Caliphate. As a result, the Seljuks became hostile to the Shia-leaning Fatimid Empire in Egypt. The Seljuks were also hostile to the Buwe Kingdom, which was also Shia. The Seljuk Sultanate itself ended during the reign of the Sultan Gayatsad in Abu Sayyuja Muhammad. The attack of the Khwarezmi Kingdom troops on the Seljuks in 1128 AD or 511 Hijriya ended the Great Seljuk Dynasty. The Seljuk Turks were divided into small autonomous kingdoms and fought each other. On the other hand, towards the end of the Seljuk Sultanate, a group of Turks who worked as shepherds, had migrated from Kurdistan to Anatolia. The Turkic tribe was led by Suleiman Shah. They migrated to avoid the attacks of the Mongols who began to seep into Asia Minor and Iraq. When the leadership of the tribe shifted to Erchiral, the son of Solomon, in about 1230 AD or 628 Hijriya, the position of the Turks was still on the run from the Mongols. In the run, Erchiral and members of his tribe took the time to help the Seljuk troops who were in urgency against the Byzantine troops. Thanks to Erchigral's help, the Seljuk army was spared defeat. In return, Erchiral and his tribe were given a plot of land in western Anatolia bordering Byzantine territory. In 1299 AD or 699 Hijriya, Erchiral died. The leadership of the Turkic tribe was handed over to his son Uthman. As the leader of a tribe whose territory was a gift from the Seljuks, Uthman took the same political policy as his father, Erchigral. He befriended the Seljuks of his country and religion. As a consequence, Uthman was hostile to Byzantium. Basically, Uthman's territory was a buffer zone between the hostile Seljuks and Byzantines. This condition made Uthman and his tribe members always on alert from the Byzantine attack which was actually aimed at the Seljuks. This condition also prompted Uthman to expand into Byzantine territory with the aim of stemming Byzantium's expansion into Uthman's territory and the Seljuks themselves. It seems to Uthman, the best way to defend against the threat of Byzantium is to push into Byzantium territory and make it his territory. During his reign, the small Ottoman territory became wider. This power, which initially only functioned as a buffer on the border between Byzantium and the Seljuks, had become quite intimidating. 
The expansion of territory and victories in the battle against Byzantium had attracted other Turkic tribes to come and join Uthman. Moreover, after the fall of the Seljuk Sultanate, Uthman became a new hope for the Turks to raise their status again. However, when Uthman died in 1320 AD, Nikia, Bursa, Izmit, and Pege were still not in Uthman's hands. After the death of Uthman, this sultanate was led by Orhan son of Uthman. Orhan continued the political policies of his predecessors. During Orhan's reign, the Ottoman Empire controlled the city of Bursa and made it the capital of the empire. So far, Bursa was the first permanent capital for the Sultanate. After the successful control of Bursa, other Byzantine cities fell into the hands of the Ottoman Empire. Nikia fell around 1331 AD, while Izmit fell around 1337. In Izmit, Orhan founded the first higher education institution within the Ottoman Empire. It was also during Orhan's time that the Janissary army was formed. When Orhan died in 1362 AD, he was succeeded by his son known as Muradi. The capital of the Ottoman Empire was moved from Bursa to Edirne by Muradi around 1365. A year after the relocation of the capital, the Pope called for a crusade to expel the Ottomans from the Balkans. But unfortunately, the Pope's call was only responded to by Duke Armadia VI of Savoy, a cousin of the Byzantine Emperor, who brought his fleet from the Aegean to the Dardanelles. That's it for the first part of the review about the beginning of the establishment of the Ottoman Empire. Hopefully it will be useful and see you again in the next videos.